Men who have aspired to flight have always been concerned with two fundamental factors, the aircraft and its method of propulsion. Sometimes the craft itself has uh, been unsatisfactory. Sometimes the method of propulsion has lacked power, or perhaps too little thought was given to power control. Now here, the means of propulsion was quite simple. While in this, it is so complicated that it borders on, uh, well, confusion. The engine-driven propeller has long been the principal method of aircraft propulsion. Its action might be compared to that of a huge screw that bores its way through the air and pulls or pushes the plane along. But certain inherent characteristics of the propeller have always presented serious difficulties. At extremely high altitudes, the air is so thin that the propeller cannot get an efficient grip upon it. So, at extremely high speeds or high altitudes, and especially at both, its efficiency declines rapidly. The tips of the propeller will attain the speed of sound before the rest of the plane, resulting in shock waves and forcing a limit to the speed of propeller-driven craft. Now, in jet propulsion, or propulsion by reaction, there is no propeller to limit speed or altitude. Hence, men have sought for years to utilize the propulsion by reaction principle in flight. This principle of propulsion is very simple. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The lawn sprinkler turns because of the weight and speed of the ejected water. The fact that the water is ejected in air has nothing to do with the motion. The sprinkler would still turn in a vacuum. The rocket travels because of its reaction to the weight and velocity of the matter it ejects. However, with present-day fuels, the rocket's limit of flight is fairly short. The jet plane operates on the same principle. It moves forward because of the reaction of the jet. At present, only the jet engine makes possible sustained flight by reaction. The turbojet engine consists of two main rotating elements. The compressor and turbine are mounted on a single shaft. Air is drawn in, compressed, and packed into the firing chambers where fuel is injected. The constantly burning fuel tremendously increases the energy of the enclosed gases, which rush out of the tail cone at about 1,200 miles per hour and give the plane its forward thrust. This is the simple principle of reaction propulsion that changed the whole outlook of the aviation industry. These are the original films of the Bell Air Accomplice, making the first jet flight in America in 1942. The General Electric engine which powered that flight